Good evening. I will not beat around a bush. My name is Lucine and I'm going to be your storyteller today. Yes, today. Have you forgotten? Today is a very special night. It's stories in the dark. And someone gave me a very good story to tell just a while ago. And I want you to hear it. Yes. Right now. No, oh, don't be silly. So what if there's no electricity? This is the perfect time for a creepy or maybe a scary story. Don't be afraid. I'll be here with you. So, shall we begin? She's Different Tonight by Heather Graham. It was Halloween. And what a Halloween. You have to understand, I really love Halloween. Such a perfect night was truly rare. The weather was balmy, almost warm, but kissed with a cool breeze. The sky has been crystal clear all day. Blue, beautifully blue. And the full moon was about to rise high. It had begun its ascent already. Soon, it will be luminous across a black velvet heaven. I mean, conditions could not have been more perfect. I was dressed like a football player. And it was a perfect costume for me, honestly. Not to sound too cocky, but I can pull off a chalk pretty well. I have the old, all-American, farm-raised, blue-eyed, weeds and haired boy next door appeal. I'm pretty tall, 6'3", and I have broad shoulders before adding the pads in. I look like the real deal. All American, the boy next door. Funny, I was anything but. She happened to be at the service bar just as I was. And since I've seen her before, I knew her to be usually shy and mild mannered. She hung with a crowd that was kind of on the edge. Close. Too, but not quite in with the elite the kind always hoping to get in to get closer to those of us who glowed with the esteem and admiration we received from others knowing me will be a notch in her belt she might be willing to do just about anything for the privilege of saying that we were friends that she had been with me on Halloween night. Perfect. She was perfect. I've been watching her, you see. I've been contemplating this night. Then tonight, I've been watching again. Making sure she'd come alone and was trying to fit in. Tonight, here. I've been watching again with patience, knowing that I was stalking her, but keeping in mind as well that I needed to be the perfect date to make sure that it was her. The perfect date. Someone who drew a little noticed. Someone not easily missed. And that was her. Usually. This Halloween, though, it seemed she was playing against type. And it worked for her. No more dowdy little schoolgirl bordering on the nerdy. 
I was pleasantly surprised by her wickedly erotic appeal. The good girl, all dressed up as she were bad. Like I said, I've seen her before. I stalked her. She always had an armload of books. She usually wore glasses and they were often slipping down her nose. She was the studious type. A mouse. She kind of hunched forward when she walked, hugging those books of hers. She was a good girl who had left home and gone on to college to do the folks proud. I always thought she must have come off a farm. You'd think nerd and you'd be right. But I have to admit, though I hadn't given it much thought before, there had always been something appealing about her. Something delicious in the scent of her. And tonight? Well, she had almost pitch black hair to begin with, long and straight, and she had the kind of hazel eyes that, with the contact lenses she was wearing, really look on an honest-to-God, snake-like vampire appearance. Very cool. She was wearing a dress that might have done Morticia or Vampira brow. It hugged her body, v her every curved. It was as if she were breaking out of some kind of shell and better man than I might have been hard pressed to resist. Who had ever imagined the figure beneath those books, beneath the gawky stands? And yet she was still, well, the same girl. The same girl who needed me. And as I already admitted, I had been watching, eyeing her. Not quite imagining this, but planning out my moves, you might say. Hey, I said. Hey, she replied, just a little startled that I had talked to her. Great costume, I said. You too. It's just a football thing, I said. Her lips curled in a smile. One would think you might have dressed up like a wolf, she said. Ouch. So she did have a sense of humor. Who would have thought you'd be a sexy undead? I whispered. My tone? Very flattering. Oh well, life can be pretense and dress up, she said. She sounded breathless. In fact, it was great. She almost looked as if she were going to swoon. Need some air? I asked. She looked at me, surprised once again. I think she might have blushed. Hard to tell in that makeup she was wearing. Fake lashes? Or were those her own, touched with mascara? She was a fascinating miracle. She was actually stunning tonight. Seductive and clever. Witty. And the way she looked in that tight getup. I had been lying. She was sexy, sensuous, hot. She looked downward for a moment and I knew she was thinking quickly. Maybe her heart was even fluttering. After all, I was one of the most popular kids in school. Okay, I admit, I come from a lot of money. I drive a cool car, but the rest? I've done my own. 
I have a certain amount of charm and pure animal appeal. She was thinking, Wow, me! Vince Romero has singled me out of the crowd. Okay, I think I've knitted. I might be a little on the cocky side too. She looked at me. Air, she said simply. Yeah, it's getting stuffy here. I said with a shrug. Shall we slip away? I was my most seductive self. I'd never quite imagined it like this. That I'd be more than plain teasing. But I wasn't jarred or thrown off. I was simply enjoying. She stared at me for a moment. I only smiled. She looked the part, but she wasn't quite there. She was like a deer caught in the headlights. She seemed to tremble. Then she nodded, just as if she's been hit. No. Um, you did come alone, I ask. Yeah, such a sweet throaty note in her voice. And you? You came alone? She asked. Okay, so I usually had a blonde with a size quadruple D bazoongas on my arm. I smiled. I've been waiting for you all night. I've watched you, you know. Oh, she breathed, staring at me. Really? Really, I assured her. She flushed with pleasure and looked away for a moment. You know, she admitted, I've been watching you too. Really, I countered. Really, she said. I guess, well, I guessed you didn't notice. People are watching you all the time. I shrug, but smile. And place my hand at the small of her back. We slipped out the door. I was careful. No one saw us. Hey, my car is right over there, and I have a six pack and a cooler in the back, I told her. I had noticed that she was carrying a draft beer. She looked at me. Those eyes, those eyes of hers were wicked. I'm sure you do, she said. Be prepared, I said. That's my motto. She laughed again. The sound was throaty, sexy. Wow. It was going to be a good night. Oh, yes. Halloween. A full moon. The little wishy, washy girl suddenly looking like a Cosmo girl. It was all right. And she just had no idea. I felt my blood heating up. This was going to be an easy conquest. Easier than I had imagined. I slip an arm around her shoulders as we walk to the car. There was a full moon out. Cool. Too cool. You didn't get a full moon on Halloween all that often. We reach the car. Want to drive? 
I asked her. Sure. She sounded a little breathless. It was such a great pickup line. Everyone wanted to drive my car. It was a jazz up sports car, an Audi with a few customs alter alterations. Friends drooled to have my car, and she was getting to drive it. I opened the driver's side door for her, and she slid in. I bounded around to the passenger seats and hopped in beside her. She was running her fingers over the leather seat. Nice, she told me. Thanks, Ivana Romanov, I said rolling her name pleasantly on my tongue. Pretty name. I'm glad you liked it, she told me. I had a little surprised. After the first sign of shock she'd shown, she'd begun gaining some confidence. Maybe she knew that she was nerdy, but now that she was in the proper attire, dynamite looking and totally alluring without her hunch over books and down on the nose glasses russian i ask she waved a hand in the air oh well i guess my ancestors were from eastern europe somewhere vince romero spanish Italian? I smiled. Eastern European too, I said. But hey, maybe that means we're meant for each other, huh? Romero? Romanov? Not that far off. Not that far off at all, she said, nodding. There you have it. Two unique mysterious past, I said. Oh, quite, she laughed. And we both have New England accents, she said. Hey, ain't that America? Land of opportunity, I said. The moon was rising. It was getting later. Surely she must have known that she was being seduced, no matter how naive she might have appeared at times. I was cool, after all. I found myself realizing that she was close, that she was wearing a truly exotic perfume. Her body was warm, enticing. She had moved even a little closer to me. No. I moved a little closer to her. That perfume, wow, it was seductive. Most felt guilty, almost. In fact, I was so close to guilt, I could taste it. I tempered down the feeling. It was Halloween. It was perfect. All was going according to plan. I always thought of you as shy, I murmured. I guess I am shy, usually. It's just that, well, I've heard about you. I've watched you. As I told you, and the girls talk, of course, she told me. Was it kind of a come on? Was I supposed to prove that I was as studly as she had heard? I leaned back smiling. I let my fingers play in that long silky black hairs of hers. How odd. I mean, it was her hair, the same hair she had every day. Tonight, it was electric. So sleek and shiny, it almost gleamed blue. 
Where am I going? She asked. Huh? I love driving your car, but where should I drive to? Somewhere quiet, where we can be alone, I said. Too much? Would you bolt? Well, where would you be going if you were driving? She asked. Quiet, where we won't be disturbed, I murmured. As if I were deep in thought, I looked at her. I know. The cemetery. Oh, does it disturb you? I mean, if so, oh no, she said. I like cemeteries. They're full of history. They're full of the dead, I couldn't help but say. Her sweet, teasing smile slipped back to her lips. History, she said stubbornly. Cemeteries are filled with stories and with lives gone by and history. Sure. She drove straight to the cemetery, far out on Main Street. She was right about the history. The cemetery went way back. Heroes from the Revolutionary War were buried in it. Hell, there was a grave that belonged to a fellow who had come over on the Mayflower. There was a small church way down on the western side. So I guess that meant it was officially called a graveyard rather than a cemetery. But the church was one of the oldest buildings in our area, and it was a small, locked tight at night. In fact, the structure standing kind of forlorn in the cool moonlight made it all the better. The point here is that the place was old, spooky, and neat. There was a wall around it, an old stone wall, but the wall was about two feet high. I had a blanket and the cooler in the back. It was mild for October. Perfect. Once again, I counted my blessings. All things were perfect. We're going into the cemetery? She asked. Dead people are the safest people in the world, you know. They won't hurt you, I told her. You just said that you like cemeteries. They're filled with history and great stories about lives gone past. That's in the daytime, she said, shaking her head. But she was just watching me. She wasn't really protesting. Have you ever been in a cemetery at night? I asked. Maybe, she said coyly. Maybe? Oh, she was lying. She shivered slightly. We can go somewhere else. I mean, believe it or not, I just kind of love the peace around here and the quiet, I said. I was surprised. I sounded a little lame. She looked at me and smiled slowly. Well, I will be with you. You are certainly safe with the folks in a cemetery. I said, graveyard, whatever. Of course, in my mind, I was being too honest. None of the folks in the graves will do her any harm. So we gathered up the cooler and the blanket, exited the car, and hopped over the wall. I helped her over the wall, realizing I did so just how perfect a little figure she had. Tiny waist and flaring curves above and below. I had never imagined that she was so finely honed that she obviously worked out that she was such a piece of physical perfection that word again perfect 
not a bad night's work. We found the place beneath a huge old oak and spread out the blanket. She sat with me and I noticed her drink was gone. I popped a tab of dark Irish beer and offered it to her. She drank, watching me. Those snake-like vampire eyes. Getting a golden glow in them that was truly exciting. I sipped my beer and I looked to the sky and then I kissed her. It was great. She was hesitant, a little shy still, despite her demeanor. I pressed her downward, savoring the feel of her heat and shivering within her. Then it started. The transformation. I felt it tear and burn through me, and with Ivana in my arms, the rip in my muscles, the fire in my blood, and the savage hunger in my heart were just about orgasmic. Soon she would scream. She would see the shoulder pads fall away, the football breeches stretch and tear, and she would know the true concept of a guy who was an animal. I felt the first magnificent howl at the moon was eliciting form in my truth. Yes, I was transforming the all-American boy into the all-American werewolf. I did have to be careful. I was living in the modern world, of course, here in America. I actually wanted to get my college degree and enter the truly savage arena of corporate law. So, I did date, and I was a stud, and I didn't rip and tear apart all those women who befriended me. But hell, it was Halloween, and Halloween with a full moon. I'd been extremely watchful that night. I'd caught her at the service bar and I knew that we'd exited without anyone seeing us. I looked down. I looked down longing for that look in her eyes, that look that meant terror and knowledge. But usually it had something a little more. Something that told me a woman knew of her own death and yet her sexuality was at such a heightened peak that she would die in the throes of ecstatic excitement. And the look in her eyes would be ecstasy in and of itself for me. This isn't boasting. This isn't arrogance or conceit. It is what I am and what the beast within is capable of creating and the sensation that would follow for me. Ah, it would be wondrous. Not to mention the soul-shattering wonder of the kill. But her eyes weren't full of terror or excitement. She was staring at me with amusement, total amusement and she started to laugh <laughs> I had never known that laughter would ruin everything that it would stop the transformation don't you know what I am don't you see I demanded to my astonishment, she pushed at my chest with a stunning power. I halfway fell back. I stared at her, thinking that my fury would start the transformation all over again. But she leaped atop me, and her laughter tore from her like a banshee's cackle in the night, and to my amazement, I discovered that I was pinned beneath her. 
pinned me. Don't you know what I am? Can't you see? She demanded with a throaty chuckle. You are in a costume tonight and I finally am not. Oh, the poor little bookworm, the shy girl who would fall all over herself for a chance to be with the hot guy. Oh, what a silly, silly egoist of a dumb animal you are. I opened my mouth to speak, but no words came. Above me, I saw the moon, the beautiful moon. That was when she leaned forward and bit me, sank her fangs into my flesh and began to slurp. And beneath that beautiful moon, I heard the horrid sucking sound she made. And I felt my blood, my life, my magnificent life being drained away. It was Halloween, and what a Halloween. Not quite so perfect. The end. So, how do you define the story? Such a twist, right? And such a girl power, too. Imagine that. So I hope you enjoyed that story for today's episode of Stories in the Dark. So, are you ready to go to sleep? Oh, come on. You won't have nightmares. Remember... I'm going to be here with you. So, until next time, until next stories in the dark. Let's go to bed, shall we? <laughs>